Click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello friends, today we are going to study exactly all the reactions which take place which help us to remove all the impurities in the form of slag, exactly what happens in the blast furnace of copper and we will see how the exact procedures work. Now let us see the chemical reactions of smelting, reduction with the help of smelting. What do I mean by reduction? If I say I am reducing some compound or reducing some element, that means I am removing oxygen from it. So now let us remove oxygen or the remove the oxides from the copper ore with the help of a process known as smelting. So reduction by smelting, the charge, what is basically charge? It is a mixture of roasted ore, coke and silica is heated in the presence of excess of air in a water jacket blast furnace. I will be teaching you what water jacket blast furnace is. The oxidation of the ferrous sulphide starts during the roasting proceed further and form ferrous oxide. So why are, let us see the reactions which take place. We have ferrous sulphide present in the ore. It is 2 FES plus 3 O2 forming 2 FeO plus SO2 volatile. And this arrow upward says that it is volatile the impurity will go into the air. So what is it 2 FES plus 3 O2 let us just see the balancing of the reaction so I have 2 Fe on this side 2 Fe on the product side sulfur is also 2 on the reactant side sulfur is 2 on the product side now let us count the number of oxygens in it we have 3 O2 when I say 3 O2 I have O2 3 times 2 into 3 is 6 over here I have 2 SO2 so 2 into 2 which is 4 and I have 2 FeO so 2 plus 4 in all it is 6 thus this is a balanced reaction this balanced reaction what does it give us it is it gives us FeO now let's see what we can do of this FeO the ferrous oxide so formed combines with sand to form fusible slag now what basically slag is slag is a form of impurity all the impurities combine together and form slag now this slag will not react with anything, will not get mixed up in anything. So we can easily filter out the slag from our molten extracted metal. So now let us see how is this formation of slag possible. We have FeO. Now from where did we get FeO? FeO we got from the product of the previous reaction. FeO plus SiO2. SiO2 is the flux that we have added. Now why do we add flux? We add flux deliberately. So this flux goes and mixes with all the impurities and forms slag. So FeSiO3 is the exact slag which is going to be formed. Now let us see the diagrammatic representation of the entire process, how the entire process happens in the presence of a water jacketed blast furnace. So now what do I mean by water jacket blast furnace? The entire blast furnace is covered by a covering. This covering contains water in it but not plain water. It contains heated water in it. The water in it is heated and that is the reason why the temperature of the entire blast furnace is maintained. So over here you can see there is a water jacket onto the walls. This on all the four sides of the walls we will have this water jacket. This water jacket the water will be in the presence of water vapor which are in the heated form so that there is no entry or exit of heat otherwise. On top we have a charging pipe and a charging floor. On with the help of this charging pipe the charge is passed through it. Now what is charge? It is the ore mixed with coke and silica in proper proportions. This is passed into the water jacket blast furnace. Inside there are fire bricks. Fire bricks help and in increase the temperature and since the temperature increases the reactions will happen smoothly. Now all the reactions which take place will have a lot of byproducts in it. Have, we have seen that most of the reactions taking place have something volatile forming a byproduct and that volatile will go away in the air. So all that forms waste gases. It is very important to eliminate all the waste gases from the blast furnace because if that does not happen those waste gases will combine with something else and form something else which will be very difficult to remove from the blast furnace. So now these waste gases are being removed through this small outlet that is the waste gas exists. Now 
as the charge comes down it flows through all the fire bricks you can see a large layer of fire bricks this fire bricks are kept heated with two things the first is the water jacket since the water jacket is hot the fire bricks inside it will also become hot and the second most important thing is the air blast main this air blast main keeps on giving in hot blasts of air keeping the fire bricks at a very high temperature the charge pipe the charge which has come down through the charge pipe gone through the reactions given out all the volatile impurities will now flow down slowly slowly through this water bricks but as it flows down it is kept heated by the end till the end it reaches the down part of the blast furnace and there there is a outlet for fusible slag so the fusible slag are all the lighter particles which can just flow down easily and then are all taken out apart from that all the metal is taken out in the form of molten mat out the copper which comes in that format comes out in the molten mat out format as long as fes is present in the mixture co2o cannot be formed as copper has higher affinity for sulfur than oxygen so for this we need to remove fes from the mixture till now we have not even started with any reactions containing copper as such why because it is very important to remove all other impurities before before the actual reaction of copper takes place and that is the reason why we have to remove fes which we removed in the previous reaction in the form of slag now the co2o combines with fes and is changed back into its sulfide so i have co2o plus fes forming feo plus co2s most of the iron is converted into its oxide which is removed as slag from the exit provided for slag we have seen the exit provided from the slag in the diagram while the molten mass containing mostly cuprous sulfide what is cuprous sulfide cu2s with a little ferrous sulfide called mat is taken out from the ex exit at the bottom of the furnace so now what happens is what comes in the form of mat molten mat is not exactly actually copper it is cu2s copper sulfide plus a little amount of ferrous sulfide so we cannot use that we need to refine it further the mat so produced is then converted to blister copper with the help of bessemerization now we will study the process of bessemerization bessemerization the molten mat is now transferred to bessemer converter it is a pear shaped furnace made up of steel plates and lined with basic lining of lime and magnesia it is mounted on trinus and can be tilted in any position the furnace is provided with pipes known as tours through which sand and hot air are blown into it the tours are fitted in the side and sufficiently high above the bottom so that the molten metal drops below the level of tears and escapes the oxidizing action of air so this is the diagram of my bessemer converter as you can see it is pear shape it is made up of steel and inside on the interior walls of it there are linings of lime and magnesia this lime and magnesia lining act as refractories that is they will maintain the temperature inside the bessemer converter as it is and will not allow a lot of temperature to go out it is on a tunnel what is a tunnel it is a sort of a fitting through which the entire bessemer converter is fitted and then we can change the fitting and it can tilt in either of the directions based on how we want it to be right now in the diagram it is standing perfect over here down we have the molten matte what is molten matte copper sulfide and iron sulfide and over here are the tours through with the help of tours we can blast in hot sand and hot air why do we do this because it is simply a vessel if we see bessemer converter is just a vessel and we need to keep on increasing the temperature of it so we keep on increasing the temperature by blasting it hot air and hot sand in it this hot air and hot sand do not only increase the temperature of the converter but also maintain a pressure which helps in the reactions to help more easily now remember what are we exactly converting from what in the bessemer converter we have the molten matte in the bessemer converter and at the end we want pure copper so there are a few reactions which take place now let us see these reactions from the matte to the pure copper now what basically is mat it is ferrous sulfide and copper sulfide so following reactions take place in a bessemer converter conversion of ferrous sulfide to slag fes plus 3o2 forming 2 feo plus 2 so2 fes is my ferrous sulfide plus 3 times oxygen forms feo plus 2 so2 let us now balance these reactions 
uh, we have on the reactant side two iron where also we have two iron we have two sulfur on the product side also we have two sulfur and over here we have three into two that is six oxygen over here we have two into two four plus for this feo two into oxygen that is two four plus two which is six so this is a balanced reaction with so2 as volatile so if so2 goes out it is a volatile substance and what are we exactly remaining what is that exact product it is 2 feo this feo will mix with sio2 sio2 is nothing but our flux which we have added deliberately because we know that this sio2 will get mixed with feo and form something known as fesio3 fesio3 is a slag it this slag will not react with anything it will just come out from its outlet the second reaction which takes place is partial oxidation of cu2s to cu2o now oxidation means simply adding of oxygen so over here on the reactant side i have cu2s but on the product side i will get cu2o that means oxygen is being added to my copper let's see how that happens a part of Cu2S is oxidized to Cu2O. So I have twice Cu2S plus 3O2 forming twice Cu2O plus 2SO2 again gaseous form. So now I have twice Cu2S. So number of copper on my reactant side will be 2 into 2, 4. On the product side also I have 2 into 2, 4. Sulfur is twice over here. Sulfur is also twice over here. And my oxygen is 3 into 2, 6. On my product side, my oxygen is 2 into 2, 4 plus 2. 4 plus 2 is 6. Now, if we look at this balanced reaction thoroughly, we will find out that 2SO2 is a volatile substance. That means that 2SO2 will go out in the air. So, the main product that is being formed is 2Cu2O. Now, we will have further reaction with 2Cu2O because at the end, what we need is pure copper. Reduction of Cu2O by Cu2S to metallic copper. Rest of Cu2S combines with Cu2O to form blister copper. So now I have some part of Cu2S because there was partial oxidation in the second step, not complete oxidation. So some amount of Cu2S is already remaining. So that some amount of Cu2S is used over here plus 2 Cu2O forming 6 Cu plus SO2. The 6 Cu is the purest form of copper we get after all the processes thank you so much for watching this video stay tuned to ikeda and subscribe to ikeda